Christmas Eve, night of great expectations. Night when children dream of candy canes and electric trains. This is the night when dreams come true, children's dreams, and the dreams of their parents. For on this Christmas Eve, into many homes will come a whole new world of entertainment. Super sets like this will bring to many families opportunity for greater understanding and the spirit of peace on earth and goodwill toward men. No! <coughs> Bang! That's wild. What the hell's wrong with that kid? Hi, I'm Scott Huffines. And I'm Tom Warner, and you're watching the 1998 Xmas special on Atomic TV, A Ho-Ho Huns Holiday in Hamden. And this year, what kind of treats do we have, Scott? Oh, boy. Well, uh, you know, uh, my big highlight, as always, is uh, Garage Sale, our house band, who will be performing tonight. Our carolers. Our carolers. Uh, what else? Underdog Lady. We've got Underdog. We've got everyone's favorite Hun, Stella Gambino. In fact, hey, Stella! We're on the avenue here. Hey, Stella! I am Stella Gambino. Come in here, Trevor. Come on, Miss Holly. <laughs> Are you ready for Underdog Lady? I'm all ready. I'm so excited that she's here. I want to have a pajama party. I, I think that's a good idea because, you know, it's a tradition. We lose a lot of traditions in Christmas. It's been very commercialized, but I think Suzanne Muldowney, Underdog, really is what Christmas is all about, don't you think? I think Suzanne Muldowney should get tons of Scooby snacks in her stocking because she comes a long way for the Hamden Christmas Parade. That's what it's all about. At least Underdog Lady's real, unlike Santa Claus, who's nothing but a hoax. What's the matter? You don't like Santa Claus? Well, you know, you got to believe, Scott. I know you're kind of a Grinch about the holidays. Right, you still have a lot of gullible children who have been set up, you know, for the all for the all time um, uh, put on and subsequent letdown. What's the matter? You don't like Santa Claus? No! Howdy! Merry Christmas! By now you know, I'm the star of this Yuletide show. No! 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 Oh, oh, oh! No! 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 Oh, oh, oh! Are you still, you're still insisting that Santa Claus came to Atomic Books last year? Yeah! After I left, okay. Yeah, because he rewards those who believe. I and you gotta believe, don't you think, okay. Stella? You have to believe. I just got a, a postcard from Chris Kringle. He told me to put the... Independence card away this year. Christmas is on him, and he's been hiding out too long. He's coming out of the chimney. Wow. Whoever it is, I believe, and I'll be waiting. Pop. Santa's got a brand new bag. But I think most importantly is it, it ties in with the mayor's uh, parade that we're going to see footage of, Underdog, Suzanne Maldane. She is the spirit of Christmas, and I think this year she's going to reveal the true meaning to those of us who have forgotten. We spent a lot of time with her this past weekend. More time than most mortal men would even envision or take uh, on. At least 12 hours. We picked her up at the train station, and you see, I still have. Oh, you gotta get rid of that. My wall wall ice tea that. because. Does she drink that or does she pee in that bottle? Like, Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. No fictional superheroes are ever depicted as having to make their toilet. That's that's one vice that is uh, kept pure. He's not, they're not made to have it as a vice. She drinks in this bottle, from this bottle, and she strongly believes in recycling, and she said, at all costs, make sure you recycle this. The only problem is I've been so busy that I haven't had a chance to do my recycling, so I am going to carry this with me during the whole show until I can recycle this container. Golly, I'm so impressed. Recycling is everyone's responsibility. That was, that was a very big issue with Underdog Lady. She really did teach us the true meaning of Christmas. That's true, because this is the year, Xmas 98, the year Underdog saved Christmas. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Hi, I'm Tom Warner. And I'm Scott Huffines. We're here at Atomic Books, and you're watching Atomic TV. <laughs> This world the headlines read of those whose hearts are filled with greed and rob and steal from those who need to right this wrong with blinding speed goes underdog 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 speed of everything or a thunder fighting all who rob or plunder underdog
was that? Somebody exploded a balloon. You don't like balloons? I, I can't stand abrupt, loud noises. Oh. Don't you find them startling? City desk and hurry. Give me the desk. City desk. City desk and snappy. Hello, Ed. Well, here it is. The doctors all say she's daffy. Yeah, completely nuts. I was going to I was going to wrap up my point in just another moment. <laughs> Sounds funny, I suppose, but I can't help feeling sorry for that dame. Me too, in a way. Underdog. For Underdog, it was a fairly routine hero's day, and he went quietly about his heroic business. plumbing job. Stella is in the car. Oh, okay. She couldn't come down because Stella broke her foot. So she's on crutches in the back seat. So. I think she told me she hurt herself when she called me up to uh, let me know that Tom had gotten my messages. The braids are two and they're probably starting to line up now. But uh, but before we head out there, I, uh, I, ought, to, I ought to go to the ladies. Room. Okay. Uh, Not a problem. So let's... After you. Underdog. At home, dear. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah, they don't have in like any place like this. They don't have recycling. Okay, but the, the, well, the thing is, um, you know, I said, look, I, I just finished the contents of this little water oh, bottle, so, you know, if, you, if, you, um, if you can take this and, and make sure to recycle. I'll take it, I'll put it in. I will recycle that. Yeah, Not a problem. We're in the recycle. All right. You have what? So you have Wawa or something? New Jersey? I have Wawa. So there's Wawa here, too. I, I thought, I thought I'm sorry. perhaps, uh, <laughs> I hey, thought perhaps right. they were it's located going. only in the Delaware Valley. No, they're up there. Actually, we talked Delaware. about that. About the, that's right. I thought about the underdog. That's right. They don't anymore. It's not called that anymore. Not in Baltimore. They just call it the uh, beef sausage or something. There's nothing saying underdog on it. Because I tried to get one the other day. Oh, they're still called underdog where I am. But, uh, but, they, but they, didn't, they didn't realize uh, about the existence of the uh, underdog superhero character. Really? Um, well, Just and, coincidence. And, and, and in the stands where I see the hot dogs displayed, they have this caricature of a dog, but it's a conventional uh, hound dog. It doesn't look anything um, like the underdog we know. Really? Really. How utterly fascinating. We'll be back with more underdog after these messages. Stay tuned to the Atomic TV Xmas 98, the year underdog saved Christmas special. Surprise! We hope your tree next Monday night is gay and festive and sparkling bright. And on each branch you won't forget America's finest cigarette. For here's a gift of pleasure pure that's bound to make a hit for sure. With Uncle Joe from Kokomo. With Sister Sue from Waterloo. Grandpa Stratton from Manhattan. And Leona from Pomona. Dr. Roxy from Biloxi. Brother Dewey from St. Louis. Every neighbor and relation from coast to coast across the nation. <sighs> for Christmas cheer, let's join the chorus with a merry call for Philip Morris. Did I hear someone make that call for the very finest smoke of all? Johnny boy, you're right on time to join us in the wishing rhyme. To all our friends, and especially you. From Lucy. And Ricky. And Johnny, too. A, a very, very Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to, to all, all of you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Felices Pascuas. Hey, you're cutting your Christmas trees a little early, aren't you? Any law against it? There is when you steal them off of somebody else's property. Roy's outnumbered ten to one, but his pal Bullet evens the odds for him in this fight. But the big fight is because the syndicate wants to hijack the Christmas tree market. And old-time movie star Jack Holt wants to make it possible for every kid to have a Christmas tree. And Roy's doing everything he can to help it. Get a Christmas tree for Johnny, that's all you have to do. Get a Christmas tree for Johnny if he's two or ninety-two. Get a Christmas tree for Johnny and the world will smile at you. The 
fun, the fun, the fun is in the giving, the fun is in the giving, and oh, what a lift if the gift is a 58 Chevy. That's when you'll find the fun, the fun is in the giving, your family's really living, and so are you, by the way, when you give an all-new 58 Chevrolet. Now we return you to our holiday classic movie, Gang Bang Under the Mistletoe, starring Ron Hedgehog Jeremy. Oh, Merry Christmas! I knew it. Oh, I knew it. What did I just tell you? Oh, shit. Merry Christmas! Oh, ho, ho! Oh, oh, oh. There's a ho! <laughs> oh, nice sound. Nice. Sorry, it lasted too long. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Yo, ho, ho, ho. Whatever he fucking Here's wants to do. <laughs> Atomic TV is experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Atomic TV regrets that we returned you to the wrong holiday classic. We now return you to the 1959 Mexican classic, Santa Claus, and our tribute to Christmases around the world. This is Santa's Toyland, a sort of international toy factory. Here are gathered boys and girls of different races and creeds. They have come from many lands to help Santa bring joy and happiness to all of the Earth's children. These little helpers are from Africa. Talented children from the Orient. from the USA. <laughs> Hello there. We return you now to Underdog at Penn Station. We even we even ran an ad welcoming you. Yeah. City paper. I can find it. Um, oh, is, is that your is that your this only is our, copy? Um, I'll get you one. That's this man and gentleman's right here. He just came by to say hello. That's Matt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tom TV welcomes Underdog, and then we put where everything was going on. And then afterwards, our friend's band, this band Garage Sale, is going to sing Christmas songs on the street corner, 36 and Chestnut. Well, later, I mean, uh, they're singing Christmas carols um, they're singing after the, Yeah, they're singing after the parade, immediately after the parade ends. Well, do you see, do you see well, that? I, I sing, but oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I don't think, I don't think that group would welcome uh, my... Dave oh, Polly, sure. Dave Polly, this guy right here, Dave Polly, he's a big fan. Show it on the Howard Stern show, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what Christmas songs they play. But I mean, I don't think, I think that band, uh, uh, that band would stick to uh, its own members to vote wise. I don't think they'd welcome me as a guest. Oh, they'd love it. Hey, we're here with Dave McDonough and Pat Hardcore of sure. the Carolers Garage Sale. Garage Sale, now. It's now. in, uh, it's in uh, Donna's house. Now, Wait, put it on. now, Garage Sale is our house band, yet, yet I hear there's trouble that they don't want Underdog Lady performing with them, but what, what do you think? She wants to sing some, um, play, uh, what is it called? Sacred, sacred Songs, sacred songs in Latin, Latin, that's called by the church. Garage Sale accompaniment. Alright, we'll just improvise. The only Latin song we know is Island Say I Name. Ah, Pig Latin. Yeah. Silent Night A. I'll, I'll talk to Dave Polly. He, he calls himself the King of Men, and we're well, a bunch of old one of that. Someone's okay. running back. Um, he, I, I'll, I'll, need it, I'll need an extra copy. Oh, yeah, this that's is yours. for you. This is for you. Well, well, that's why I asked before, is is that your old copy? Oh, no, there's thousands of these. This is the new issue. 
So we'll put that in the car with your stuff. Because we're carrying your snacks, I understand? Uh, I got my bag with, uh, well, snacks and also my sweater and some clothing that I didn't need. And, uh, okay, well, why don't you... Oh, do you have a cold? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Underdog. So, let's get Stella. You need to run to the ladies' room. Yes. You're going to recycle that. I'm going to recycle Suzanne's this. Suzanne's going to go to the ladies' room. I'm going to run back to the store. I will meet you all in Hamden. Um, 36 and Chestnut. Where did, is that 36 and Chestnut? Is that where we're supposed to be seeing the cows? Right. Well, see, like I said, I want to be sure that they welcome me to sing along with them. Now, now I am the, I am an experienced uh, soprano. I sing in my church's choir. I, I can also solo sing, but um, but we'd have to see what they say about it. And and we can't spend too much time with my joining in with them because I have to catch a train out of here at 6:20. Okay. Well, let's. Talk, I'll talk to them. I'll see them. We I'm also going... have to be sure. Well, which songs they're doing? Right. I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about um, secular songs versus sacred songs. Right. Well, a lot of a lot of secular songs I don't care for. Oh, jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin lays an egg. The Batmobile broke its wheel. The Joker got a. I prefer the religious ones because um, because we have to remember that Jesus's birth is the whole right. the holiday. Aren't we forgetting the true meaning of this day? The birth of Santa? Because we have to remember that Jesus' birth is the whole right. the holiday. So we'll find out because, I mean, they're going to be wearing Santa Claus hats, so I don't know if they know yeah. any secular. Uh-oh. So. That, that's not... That, they they might really know. make Santa Claus too important. And, 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 it's not about Santa, it's about reality, Jesus. he is a put-on. Basically, people are forgetting what Christmas is all about. People. That's what we're Put trying to do this. Right. On the wall and actually, that's what we're image. trying to do in this episode. We're yeah, trying to the true meaning of Christmas. Everyone forgets with the commercial holiday exactly what it is. Um, it's not so much the commercialism that's bad, but, but brainwashing children into believing in a myth. When they, when, when the adult folks say, never tell a lie. Exactly. So the children are, in, are deceived by inconsistent adult folk. Mm -hmm. Suzanne continued to lecture me for another 45 minutes about the true meaning of Christmas. And finally I understood, Christmas is all about Jesus. And without Jesus, there would be no Santa Claus or Atomic TV. So in a sense, this episode of Atomic TV is brought to you by the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And now, a word from our sponsor. I'm Jesus, the Son of God, and I only drink the best. That's why I'm here to tell you about New Testament wine coolers. They put the fun back into drinking wine. What'll it be, JC? <laughs> These, Mary, for everyone. You see, New Testament starts out by turning water into wine, just like everybody else. But then they add some very special ingredients, like NutraSweet, red dye number seven, and carbonated water. The result? A miracle. <laughs> Dig in, guys. It tastes great, it's low in calories, 
And best of all, it's cheap. So even if you're poor, sick or suffering, you can still get in on the fun. Hallelujah. And teenage girls love this stuff. What's, What's your major? major? Pre-law. <laughs> That's a blessing right there. But Jesus, how do we know? Don't deny me, Peter. Go with the flow. I can't believe it tastes this good. Well, Thomas, did you doubt it would? But there's so many brands to choose from. Don't betray me, Judas. <gasps> Drink the chosen one. New Testament is a really great wine cooler. New Testament is the taste you love the most. New Testament is a really great wine cooler. Brought to you by the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We've got nutrition for your family. Chemically processed the way it should be. New Testament's here and Jesus says it's good. Go out and buy it cause he says you should. New Testament is a really great wine cooler. New Testament, come on and spread the news. New Testament is a really great wine cooler. New Testament. King of the Jews. Hey, you only live once. Enjoy. And if it's the last thing you do, make sure you try New Testament wine coolers. They're heavenly. New Testament Wine Company, Jerusalem. up. Christmas cards, huh? You're a little late, aren't you? Well, I was going to send them out Monday, but we had that steak out. I hope it stays quiet. I got more shopping to do after we get off. I finished mine. Where'd you get your girlfriend? Stationery set, some paper, envelopes, leather binding. Joe, you'll never learn. Now, what's the matter? No woman wants a stationery set. You get her something personal. Well, it's got her initials on it. Golly, I'm so impressed. Underdog. We rejoin Underdog, having left Penn Station, in the Atomic TV limo, along with Stella Gambino, your humble servant Tom Warner, driving Suzanne to the mayor's annual Christmas parade in Hamden. And the discussion comes up about the instrumental surf carolers' garage sale, and Suzanne potentially singing Latin carols with them. Oh, that would be great. That would be just too great. Well, that would really be something. What's your favorite Underdog song? singing uh, Christmas yeah. carols? Yeah. Yeah, let's well, do it. Yeah, but that's something that, see, uh, um, 
underdog never had a Christmas-related adventure made up in any of the cartoons, and, uh, and and he never sang per se. There was there was one there was one episode in which um, he was made to uh, fight this uh, group of uh, mechanical robots that were ransacking the city. Uh, that their inventor said that. Uh, their control boxes had to be shattered by somebody striking a very high pitch so that underdog struck a very high note. Oh, very good. Yeah, very nice. nice. Well, wow. I, I, I'm just lucky I was able to hit that. I mean, I've got a cold and sometimes uh, your your singing voice can be impeded when you have a cold, especially if, if you're higher ranged and, and you may be trying to hit high notes. Fascinating. Underdog. December 6, 1.45 p.m. The Atomic TV motorcade arrives in Hamden proper, and I drop off Suzanne Muldowney, Underdog, and Stella Gambino, so they may take their position in the parade, and I journey on to hook up with Scott Huffines on the Avenue 36 in Chestnut. Yeah, you have the key. Before we departed, we keys. made plans to okay, hook up so later after the parade, and Suzanne get, made plans to, to save her order. voice. Oh, that's a terrible cold, Suzanne. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to cough up all the phlegm. My, my voice sounds a bit funny, and especially if I'm going to, if, uh, if I'm invited to join in the caroling, I can't have my voice sounding funny or impeded by coughing. Yeah, you're going to have to save it a little. Huh? You're going to have to save your voice a little. Well, we've been, I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, are you going to crunch walk all the way to... Sure, why not? Let's but, kick uh, it. But I mean... Uh, you need anything else? It'll, yeah, I'm fine. But it'll, ta it'll probably key? take yeah. you longer. I'm... I'm, I'm fully, uh, I'm, I'm Let me just, uh, worried that Stella's broken foot would hold her up, Underdog decides to fly off ahead to join her position in the parade. When we return, more classic moments. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Bang! That's wild. And now we return you to Hamden and the Mayor's Annual Christmas Parade. Okay. Hi, I'm Scott Huffines. And I'm Tom Warner. You're watching Atomic TV. And we're at the Hamden Mayor's Parade. And it's not Christmas unless it's Hamden with Underdog Lady appearing. And we have a special gift for her this year. $10 worth of gift certificates to McDonald's. New Underdog from Atomic TV. The underdog likes Roy Rogers better, but we couldn't find Roy Rogers' gift certificates. So we're hoping that she'll accept uh, McDonald's gift certificates. We picked Underdog Lady up at the train station. We're waiting for her to appear in the uh, parade. You can see right now we have some Boomy Temple people. And... The riders go on forever. So if we have time lapse photography, time to use it now. Even though Suzanne doesn't believe in it. They know he's yeah. secular. Uh oh. So. That, that's not. That, they they might really know. make Santa Claus too important. Yeah, if you can pan down, we are. I am in shorts, looking very attractive. 80 degrees in December. 80 degrees, um, a holiday. We are Santa. secular as opposed to <laughs> sacred. Suzanne believes in the sacred aspects of Christmas. Tom and I believe in the secular, but actually, I don't believe in Christmas at all. I'm, this is just the Grinch. The Grinch. But, as an added treat this year, Suzanne Muldowney, underdog, is going to sing Latin carols with our favorite carolers garage sale immediately after the Hamden Parade. Well, you're going to see her sing and dance and perform her sacred music. Uh, In Suzanne, a dead language. Suzanne is a trained soprano. I do want to point out to the viewer that Suzanne has a cold. So her soprano might be a little poor, she's a little worried, but I said she will be backed up by the carolers in garage sale. First, Tom, let's enjoy the parade.
Heroes of the day, but the greatest hero of all, the American vet. This is the end, my only friend, the end of our elaborate plans, the end of everything that stands, the end. Tom Warner. Oh, I'm Scott. I'm fine. And we're here at the uh, Hamden Mayor Parade. Um, we've got the, uh, we're asking people in the crowd to film us because our cameraman, Chris Jensen of Jensen Plumbing, stood us up for a job. Or else it's what, crawl I hope he's, underwear. yeah, I think Chris Jensen's probably running around in his underwear. Um, and I hope it's clean. He's hung over. I guess let's, uh, Let's cut to Chris. I, I hear uh, Santa Claus has a video of yeah. Chris showing where he is right now. Santa Being Claus naughty. is everything. All right, now our patented Jensen Plumbing ad. Remember, your poop is his bread and butter. Jensen Plumbing, 467-1813. Hey, look, Tom. It's the star of the parade, Underdog. Jensen needs to clean up his act. And speaking up, where was the pooper scooper this year to clean up underdog's droppings? Wait a minute. Yeah. No fictional superheroes are ever depicted as having to make their toilet. That's that's one vice that is uh, kept pure. 
He's not, they're not made to have it as a vice. Hey, this is Tom Woodard at the, the Holiday Parade in Hammond, and coming up is Precious, the skateboarding dog. Oh, my. Check it out. Tom, this is truly amazing. Woo! A dog on a skateboard. Woo, precious. Here you go, dog. Yeah. I have never seen anything like that before in my life. I never. Fuck the cow, it's a cow. It's a cow. It's a cow in a car. I do think the cow is offending some of the Hindi native population of Hamden. They're not eating it. It's a sacred cow. <laughs> They're it Just a yeah. curry favor with me. Now, Dave, Dave Colley, king of men, are you excited for Underdog to be in town? Oh, yes. I hear she's still single. No ring on her finger. Um, and, you know, we did get Tell a... Color me interested. We did get a really good crotch shot of her earlier. Oh, good, good. I'll watch that on my own in private time. That's romantic. <laughs> There's a pretzel man. He's a pretzel man! Ah! There's a man on the shopping cart full of pretzels. Full of pretzels! I've never seen anything like it before in my life. We'll take a break here, but there's much more to come on 2 News at 11. And who would have thought we would have seen Precious the Skateboarding Dog and Underdog on the evening news that night on Channel 2. But it happened. Everyone is welcome to march in the mayor's parade, regardless of the tune they're marching to. And even the SK9's getting into the act. The annual event is sponsored by the mayor's office and, of course, the city of Baltimore. We'll take a break here, but there's much more to come on 2 News at 11. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. I thought I thought the parade was over because two Santa Clauses have gone by. Two. And by tradition, uh, the, the Santa is always the last one. And here we and here we still have some more entries coming. It's a little different this year, isn't it? The route is different. The route is different because of the construction. It's always it's always a rule in every parade I've been in. No one should come as Santa because there's only the one which is at the very end. And I've already seen. Have you? Yes. Good grief, Suzanne. Here comes an army of Santas. Are they purposely trying to confuse the children? Multiple Santa Claus. Is the is the worst thing about it. <laughs> and you're used to it from all your ex parade experience. Uh, Whoa. Now that's bad enough to be gunshots. It's it's awful when you in some parades I've been in they've had entrance usually dressed in period garb. Uh, depicting soldiers of bygone eras, they're carrying guns and they fire the guns every few minutes. Jeez. That sound is. How do you gassing. take that? Huh? How do you take that? It's terrible. It Nerve-wracking. Oh, you think maybe this is the end? I don't know. Um, These don't look like they're part of a parade route. That might be it. We might be ready for the music and the caroling. But how do we know that these carolers are going to let me join in with them? Oh, they, I already talked to them. It's totally cool. But, but, they look, but they look so many. Oh, these aren't all carolers. No, we're not these are just collective lowlifes of Hampton. Oh, yeah. yeah. you know, we have, we have Except for keep, these two women here. We have to, you know, we have to keep watch of time. It's just after four, and my train's at 6:20. 6:20? Oh, not a problem. We'll get you um, there. Because how are we going to rendezvous with Stella? Remember, I was talking with her about making an Elvis fantasy cake. Right. We'll hook up with Stella. I'm sure we'll see her oh, because right. her boyfriend's down here. So we'll hook up. Here's one of our carolers. This is Big Dave Colley. Dave, you're a soprano or a tenor? A tenor. Tenor, okay. 
You look like you might be a soprano. See, I wasn't sure. Because see, if you're if you're singing unaccompanied, how do you determine what you want to do any song in? I don't know. Well, see, I have perfect pitch. I can always oh, I start people off. Oh, yeah. I can always start people off. If if someone else starts and the song is uh, too low, yeah. then I do a high harmony to oh, it. Good. Oh, I'm a soprano. Yeah, I hear another band coming. Oh, really? Another? I didn't know you were. Is the voice good? Can you hit that note you hit in the car? Still got it. All right, that sounds uh, great. I didn't know what note I was going to hit. I was. Uh... <laughs> well, that was a nice note. That's good. Can you hit that note, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's lower. No, you're you're much lower. I would call that a bass bellowing. Falsetto. Falsetto. Okay. Unnaturally high pitched male voice. Bass romantic. Um. What's the story now about the caroling? Well, underdog, the deal is they're ready. And now, a brand new dance to watch and learn. But first, let's hear Garage Sale do the secular version of the seasonal classic, Silent Night. This is truly a song of the season. You take that. It's terrible. It Nerve wracking. Underdog. Now that's bad enough to be gunshots. It's it's awful. 
underdogs. They've got to play them. They've got to play them straight, not not rock and rollish. Okay. Well, they have acoustic guitars. Um, huh? Scott, maybe you could I ask them. Do. I think. Yeah. I think he knows how to play like that, doesn't he? She wants to do what? Angel of. There, there are, there are, there are a lot of carols I can do. It's just that um, I'm kind of um, uh, weary about how they would back me up after I just heard how they do Silent Night. That, that style is inappropriate. Uh, can you for, do a cappella, you know, maybe? Straight carol singing. Can you do straight carol singing, like you said, solo? Um, well. If, if they if they were to accompany me, they can't do it rock and rollish. They they wouldn't they wouldn't sing with me, and they'd have to do it straight. Okay. You'd have to tell them that. Scott, could you maybe be emissary and work that out? I'm about done. Yeah. I mean, they can play slow. They can play slow. Well, they can get an unplugged electronic well, guitar. I, I mean, they have to. Do, they have to do right. it natural, not right. that way. That's too fast. They have to. They have to. They have to do it straight forward. Right. Silent night, though. Well, 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 not just silent night. I, I, um, there are a lot of carols I can do, but they can't. But any carols that I do, um, they can't do it rock and roll. Like traditional. Yes, uh, that, that's the word. Traditional. traditional. They've got to. Traditional. They've got to play them traditionally. Underdog. And now our rendezvous with Destiny. It's showtime, viewers. Underdog. Doing the sacred version of Silent Night. What, what do you want to do? Silent Night, right? Guys? D did you tell them Silent Night? Yeah. Scott, is it all right? You want to introduce? Yeah. All right. Silent Night. No, we do it in G. Silent Night? Yeah. All right. Hi, this is Scott Huffines for Atomic TV. And this is our uh, Silent Night done in a sacred version by Suzanne Muldowney, Underdog with Garage Sale. Enjoy. All right. Christmas carols than just Silent Night. I, I'm not aware of how many they do. I mean, Scott well, well, booked them. Well, look what them. happens. I'm, um, they, did it, they did Silent Night their way. I did it traditionally, but we haven't had any, but we haven't had any other caroling per se. Mm -hmm. What happened to that group that you said were carolers? Well, they do some caroling, but it's not their main thing. So I left the booking to Scott. I'm just the camera guy.
But maybe they can do some acapella stuff. Huh? Singing. Maybe they can do acapella with you if they can't play it per se. Like that other song you wanted to do. That was beautiful, Suzanne. Wasn't that incredible? Really, really so nice. what, what happened to those carolers you said? What oh, carol? Now you were the caroler. Well, they all stepped in. Take away from you. Any thoughts on So what did the fans think? It's happening in Hamden, Hunt. Is this what Christmas is about? This is what Christmas is about. Yeah. Street corner caroling? Yeah. We'll call it that. <laughs> Jeff, any thoughts? Couldn't be happier. What a day. I mean, you've been a veteran of many of these. But did you ever think you'd see Underdog sing? That was a beautiful moment. Oh, oh, oh. Really it was. Can't wait to see that. I didn't see a dry well, eye TV in the house. Where I want to see that. Yeah, <laughs> it was magical. I can hear what you guys would brush up the warm thunder on the wind. Sure, we can hear it. Great. Uh, yeah, no, she's the best. Howard Stern show, if I'm not mistaken, is that correct? She's Troublemaker! Troublemaker! <laughs> Hello there! Are you on? Yeah. Hi, this is Tom Warner for Atomic TV. We're in Hamden for a holiday hunt celebration with Suzanne Muldowney portraying once again Underdog in the Mayor's Hello. Annual Parade. Behind us is Garage Sale of uh, playing music for us. And Suzanne, I want to ask you, I mean, this is such a tradition of you being here as Underdog in the parade. It's a part of what is the meaning of Christmas this is another for us Christmas in Baltimore. Song. What do you think the meaning of Christmas is? Is it caroling? Is it's a hat it, on everything that Christmas What do you think? Yeah. That's what Santa, I think you were saying. But more. I'm sure all of us, uh, in fact, those of us listening, know, know very well in our consciences what the real meaning of Christmas is, the birth of, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Child Jesus. Now, um, what about like things like gift giving and holidays? I mean, do you, do you, do you think that's fine? Things like uh, the exchange of present? Talk to Suzanne, I have a present for her on Atomic TV. Oh, okay. Actually, I'll hit this on pause. Well, this is a surprise to me. What do you have? What's that? I wanted to present as a special, it's a secular celebration. It's gift giving, but I know Suzanne Underdog is on the road a lot, so we have gift certificates worth ten dollars at McDonald's. Present it to you. <laughs> oh, nice. We tried to get Roy Rogers. They don't have them this year. Well, I know you like Roy Rogers. Yeah, but well, there are no, there are no more, there are no more Roy Rogers uh, in my home territory. Really? really? Uh, I, I always love their roast beef. Roast beef. Roy Rogers oh. roast beef is the best there is. So good. Ten dollars worth of certificates, and I have another made out to Suzanne Muldowney, her other identity, which is I had to fold it over. But a patch of underdog. Oh Since you're so good with sewing, I thought um, for sure. No, actually, actually, I would not sew this onto uh, any of my garments. It might arouse a uh, suspicion. So oh, really? I would just keep it the way it is in a, in a drawer, you know, kind of like a, you know, on a table, uh, kind of like, kind of like a, like a trophy where, where I keep my trophies oh, that good. I want in other parades. Well, I would be honored. Atomic TV would be honored. Underdog. But anyway, we hope you can enjoy your patch with your trophy. We would be honored to have on your trophy rack <laughs> and your coupons. So, for us, this is the spirit of Christmas. Suzanne and the Mayor's Hamden Parade in our favorite spot, Hamden. Underdog. I wonder if I'm, am I, going got... to, am I going to sing again at all, or are we going to go now? I, I don't think so. No underdog, no more singing for you. This time, the spotlight's on our house band, Garage Sale. Ho, 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 ho.
ho, 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 lady for performing with us. She was on the Howard Stern show, if I'm not mistaken, is that correct? She Troublemaker! Troublemaker! I'm gonna get my unicycle out. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas! We do accept Happy Hanukkah! <laughs> Hello there! And on that happy note, we send you off with a final look at the Miracle on 34th Street in Hamden, the light show that lights up all the way to the North Pole. Good night, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year to all. Stay tuned, dear viewer, for additional Xmas 98, the year Underdog Saved Christmas footage. Bonus footage coming up now.
You know, Underdog had so much to teach us about the true meaning of Christmas, we couldn't fit it into the confines of Atomic TV's regularly scheduled one-hour time slot. So now, dear tape viewer, we bring to you the expanded Everything There Was footage of Underdog and the meaning of Christmas, plus so much more. Stay tuned. Um, well, as far as getting the uh, McDonald's to get uh, um, now, well, some other fast food restaurants like uh, Wendy's and Burger King get them too. But I'm glad you thought of this as a present. See, uh, that's nice. When when some people um, who say, well, that, that, that they've shown uh, admiration when when they want to get me a present, or if they if they don't know what to get a present, then I suggest these gift certificates because because they're very easy to get. Also, they help defray uh, the cost of uh, some of my meals when I'm on. Uh, some of my uh, travel trips. Right, you travel so much. I know, that's why you like And you do that on your own dime. You, you pay your own ticket expense to come to Baltimore for this. Um, uh, yes, I have to, I have to um, save up the funds um, all year for the Christmas Parade series. Baltimore right. isn't the only one. There, there are uh, at least a dozen other sites. This, this year, when I'm finished, I have, well, I have three more parades to go, and when I'm finished with those, I'll have done 15 parades altogether. Golly, I'm so impressed. Just for this holiday season. Underdog. But anyway, we hope you can enjoy your patch with your trophy. We'd be honored to have on your trophy rack <laughs> and your coupons. So, for us, this is the spirit of Christmas. Suzanne and that Mayor's Hamden Parade in our favorite spot, Hamden. Um, uh, Scott was asking me about a uh, uh, presence uh, exchange. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to answer. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. Here, let me film Scott with you. And you ask her that. You know, just, you know, what, I, um, yeah. what I was curious about was which holiday traditions do you believe in? Which holiday traditions do you think well, are wrong? Like eggnog and Well, bowels. sometimes it's not, a tri it's not a question of believing. It's a question of being exposed to them and then being expected to go along with them uh -huh. uh, as, long, you know, as long as you're around. Now, as far as gift giving goes, all right, we ruled out eggnog. It's alcoholic. Right, I don't, okay, I I don't drink alcoholic that. beverages. Um, now, I, I go, I always go along with gift giving. But we, but, but the reason most people go along with gift giving, they have to remember how it all began. And um, well, also. Um, but the three wise uh, uh, men giving. Yeah, that's gifts. right. The three wise men. But also, but but also the shepherds. Prior to the three wise men, the shepherds visited the baby Jesus, and they presented him some of their uh, uh, musical instruments and perhaps some of their livestock. But even before, even before the birth of Christ, there was an ancient Roman holiday called. Uh, um, I think it was called Saturnalia. It was held at the time of the winter solstice, and and the Romans did decorate trees and exchange presents to indicate the winter solstice, the return of the gradually lengthening days, the triumph of light over darkness. So there's a tradition of gift giving, which was uh, before Christ's time, and then and that was why when Christian as Christianity became more formalized, they chose to put the date of Christ Christmas at the time of the winter solstice to to coincide with the time of the old time pagan feast because uh, supposedly Christ was born at the time of the winter solstice. And then I think that explains it. Um, yeah, the other thing I was you curious have, about. You have to remember your history. How how did a tradition get started? You've got Don't to forget a Christmas history, right? Well, you got to remember how Christmas began, and then because Scott specifically asked gift giving, that's why I had to explain to how me, that right. all started. To me, Christmas is about eggnog, but I see you said eggnog's alcoholic. Gift giving and fruitcake. I love fruitcake. I thought, I thought, I thought we had to buy it. You don't, you don't like fruitcake? No. Have you ever had it? I had it when I was a, a, a little girl, and I, I really didn't go for it. Fruitcake isn't for everybody. Some people find the taste horrible. Actually, As we'll see friend, in this my, film coming my, up. Yeah, I, I just mentioned my good friend, uh, Huck Botko. I don't know if you ever met him. He makes homemade fruitcakes. And actually, we're going to be showing him make a fruitcake on our, on our Christmas episode of Atomic TV. But if you don't like fruitcake, you don't like it. It's something you either really like or you don't like. And now Atomic TV presents Huck Botko's short film, Fruitcake.
This film was part of the Baltimore 1998 Micro Cine Festival organized by Skiz Sizzik. Thanks, Skiz, for turning us on to Fruitcake. And dear viewers, after watching this short film, you'll sympathize with Underdog's views on why she finds Fruitcake rather distasteful. Hi. Um, for Christmas this year, I'm making my father a fruitcake. Um, I don't like my father, <laughs> but this year I'm going to have fun. Santa Claus, go straight to the ghetto. Hit up your reindeer, uh, go straight to the ghetto. Santa Claus, go straight to the ghetto. Fill every stock in your mind. The kids are gonna like. Here it is so far. Um, now it's time to go outside. Father, father. My father is, uh, is traveling around the world. Do you have any more change? No, more change. Alright, you took the five, alright? Alright. You're this, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you this one I got. I got, like, 12 or something. Okay. I'm heavy too. You're what? I'm heavy. It's good. Yeah, just spin. I'll spit on it. Yeah, say Merry Christmas, Kurt. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Kurt. Merry Christmas, Kurt. Alright, man. Any more in there? Merry Christmas. No, I got one coming right, up. Thanks. That's three dollars. I'll give it to you all. That's hey, three dollars. Merry, Merry Christmas. I'm dry. I'm dry. Merry Christmas, Kurt. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Very good. Where's Thank my three dollars? I'm taking the camera, <laughs> the pipe, your coat, your hat, and her coat. Get him, baby. Get him. Get him. <laughs> Get your money first. Two, three. Can you, all say, like, can you all say Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, his name's Kurt. Kurt, you're a no good son of a gun, and this is for you for your Christmas day. Enjoy it. We heard an awful lot about you up in the North Pole, and shame, shame, shame. Everyone knows your name, you son of a gun, you. Two. All right. Thanks. All right. Is Thank that better? That's fine. Merry right. Christmas. Santa's the best. We love him. We love him. We don't like you, Kurt. Okay. Here it goes. Uh, pretty disgusting. Okay, so three hours and uh, it should be done. So, so it looks like it's done. My plane leaves um, December 24th at 11.30 a.m. for uh, Minneapolis. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Robert. <laughs> Hope it works. <laughs> Hope what works? Your camera. <laughs> Do you like caviar, Robert? No. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sure I've done this completely wrong, but I'm trying my hardest to film. It is, I'm doing a good job. Hello, do you have any wishful holiday greetings you'd like to say? Nope. Oh, Merry Just Christmas Merry would Christmas. be appropriate. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, anything else you'd like to say that's very intuitive or smart? I hope everyone's having a much better time than I am. <laughs> We are at Dad's house in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, like you asked me earlier. Are you enjoying it? Oh, I'm having a lovely Christmas Eve day. What did you get for Father? What did I get him? Yeah. Well, can't you just wait and see? I made a fruitcake. <laughs> you did not. Liar. No, I really did. You're right. I'm serious. I made him a fruitcake. <laughs> You're a fruitcake. What's that? Claude Monet. Giverne, I've been there. Oh, cool card. Yeah. So it says from here. Rob and everything? Oh my god, it's heavy. Look at Felix. Oh, okay. I don't think I need. To. Oh my! Well, Rob, what did you make for Dad? Wait, it's like a top on. Well, it. it's like a, a open fruit it cake. Up. It's, it is open. No, but there's like a top. It looks like it's got a no, plastic no. thing inside. No. Did you make this, Robert? Uh -huh. Did you make it? Uh -huh. Was it fruit cake? Uh -huh. Oh, good for you. <laughs> Rob made a fruit cake. Uh -uh. Okay. Uh-uh, but it's mighty happy. Feel it. Dad, can we get something? Oh, aromatic. The color is good. It's good, Robert. Okay. It's so actually spectacular, you and you have to soak the. Did you soak it? Uh -huh. oh, oh my God! Look at that, huh? Mm. Robert made it all by himself. Father will carve, and we have special for cake plates. But first, the word from our sponsor. Yeah. Saved by the bell. Hey, wait. <laughs> Thank you. There. I don't know if it's going to make that little piece around. It's very colorful, I must say. What do you think? Maybe a little more... Uh, no, there's raisins. Good? Yeah. Robert said there's raisins. I just grabbed a bunch. Or use your spoon. Dates and nuts and... Candied fruits, what else is in there? <laughs> Might be the best fruitcake. Well, I have, I don't know. I know fruitcake, so wait for... Yeah, I mean, you, you have a lot of friends who are fruitcakes, but... Yeah, <laughs> work with a couple, but... Actually, it really isn't that bad. Mm. It's wonderful. <laughs> Simply savory. <laughs> Very kind. Surely it is. Yes, it's very good, Robert. I'm, I'm sure yeah, it was a hamburger. It's a little good. nauseous, but I'm sure it's from maybe from the hamburger that hamburger, I cooked. Yeah. Not from fruitcake? No, not the fruitcake. Fruitcake is good for you. isn't for everybody. Some people find the taste horrible. <laughs> Hello there. When, when are you going to be showing that Christmas episode? Um, I think it's on Christmas Day and the day after Christmas. We, we air on Saturdays. Ooh. Underdog. They As the day wound down and we made preparations to return Underdog to Penn Station, she became obsessed with finding the city paper, which contained the Atomic TV ad for her appearance in the mayor's Christmas parade. She also found opportunity to take your humble host, Tiny Tom Warner, to task for not returning the over 256 phone calls she made before coming to Hamden this year. 
Are you sure the city paper? Is city that what paper. it's called? Yeah, it's a, it's a, a mail you one. Yeah. Well, Definitely. Because because they now, now they have my address, but uh, during but during the during the past months, um, Tom has been a very naughty boy about following through any time I uh, called and left him a phone message. I've been bad. I'm bad. I'm always busy, and I just I know it seems like a little thing to return calls, but I really. I'm awful. Well, I don't always you, get them. But, well, you, you understand now you've learned something tonight. If, if I'm expected to make contributions to Atomic TV now and then, like making the candy or, you know, doing other things like some of these other people have suggested, then you've got to call me up once in a while or when I call you I and leave a message, it's up to you to follow through. I'm making a resolution for that. Or I'll have you contact Stella because she is responsible, um, being a mother uh, and all. Yeah, uh, yeah, Stella gave me her phone number. She's very responsible, and she's part of Atomic TV. She's our, uh, she's the mother of the nuclear family. Yeah, now, now how much, how much yes. longer before? It's five o'clock now. Yes, yeah, Scott's before? pulling the car up. He's gonna go get the car. This might be him right now. This might be him right now. I wonder if I'm, am I, going to, am I going to sing again at all, or are we going to go now? I, I don't think so. No underdog, this time the spotlight's on Garage Sale. Atomic TV's official house band instrumental carolers do another seasonal classic. Hey, After the performance, Dave Cauley, the funny monkey of Garage Sale, took Atomic TV co-host Scott Huffines to task for orchestrating the pairing of Underdog with Garage Sale as the carolers. Could Dave have been jealous of an ego greater than his? Okay. Scott is an orchestrator of trouble. I just want to say that. What do I orchestrate? I think that's, I think that's pure genius. Okay, okay. Atomic TV Are you TV saying genius. he's been naughty? Yes, well, naughty. Huff am Daddy, I a you gotta be naughty to am be naughty. Am I a manipulator? Do I pull the string? Yes, you do. Wait, let me dance to your tune. Pull the string. You didn't take it to a chair. Pull the string.
the string. <laughs> Are you saying basically that Dave Cauley is your funny monkey? He's my funny monkey. Ooh. Scott is an orchestrator of trouble. I just want to say that. Wait, let me dance to your tune. <laughs> oh, a lot of people. I got a holiday sediment for you. God bless us, everyone. Um, Dave, what is the meaning of Christmas to you? It's uh, Toys R Us time of year. How utterly fascinating. Okay, enough of Big Dave Colley. Back to the other super ego. Underdog had a minor nervous breakdown when we discovered we left her bag back in Stella Gambino's car. Later, as we drove her to Penn Station, she had calmed down after Scott had an irritable bowel syndrome and had to take a dump at Roy Rogers while I consoled her and told her we would FedEx the contents of her bag back to her. More on that as we drive to Penn Station. The tape of two years ago, uh, the one you said was shown on the Atomic TV. Tom has that, right? Well, he has to make a copy. You need a copy, uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't have a copy yet. He was okay, going so to make me copy. Now, what, um, just for what, Tom, do you know what perishables you have to take out of Suzanne's bag? Take the iced tea out, any perishables. Um, I got think... your deodorant in there. I'm, I'm going to run an, an embroidery kit. An embroidery there, kit, there, that's important. There was a, yeah, there's a CVS pharmacy uh, white plastic bag stuffed on top, you know, of the other stuff in, in the main bag. There's an embroidery, there's a piece of white cloth that's part of an embroidery kit and, and, and some embroidery thread and a little pair of scissors. Um, yeah, um, the, the, well, the, well, the bag... The, the main bag, it, it's, a, it's a canvas bag, uh, it's, it was originally black, but now it's faded to gray, and it has, it has white, brown, and gray cats on it. Okay. And that was it. We dropped Underdog Lady off at Penn Station, where she took her train back to New Jersey. We got her on by assuring her that her bag would be found, and all its contents fed ex to her by the next day. Unfortunately, one bag of microwavable popcorn was missing. We are still investigating what happened to it. Farewell, underdog. We bid you adieu until next time, same place. In 1999, the Hamden Mayor's Parade. As Underdog takes the train back to New Jersey, we'd like to show you an alternative version, additional footage of Diva Dog singing the sacred version of Silent Night.
Wow, not a dry eye in the house that day. Uh, yeah. Wait, do it again. Hi, this is Scott Hoffman from Comic TV, and we're here at Frazier's on Hamden's Avenue. Uh, we've got an underdog lady back to the train station. She had a nervous breakdown because Tom lost her bag and was left in Stella Gambino's car. It's now Stella's job to do what? Well, I, I just want to apologize to Suzanne Muldowney, and we are sending a copy of your article uh, from the yeah, city, city paper. And all of your personal belongings, Which your are what? Uh, your your embroidery of the black eyed Susan. Maryland State Flower. At the request of Stella Gambino's attorneys and estate, we are cutting this segment. We love you, Suzanne. Here comes your bag. Should we get it down to Karen? Karen is going to be our courier. Karen is our courier. She left. Wait, you want me to carry that? In a way. Hi, I'm here with Karen, who is the official courier. Stella Gambino has passed on Underdog's bag, which will be FedEx to her tomorrow. Karen, you are like, you're part of the Christmas miracle here. Oh, uh, so I'm just a big fan of Underdog, so I want to make sure she gets her stuff back. So that'll be done, that'll be taken care of. Tomorrow, priority overnight. Tuesday, AM delivery. You were fascinated, Karen, talking to her about her college education. What? Why is that? I just think she's very articulate. Isn't she? She pulls out words I've never even heard before. On the on the car ride to the train station, we heard ostentatious. Ostentatious. And we heard recuperative. recuperative. She's very articulate the way she pronounces, too, isn't she? Needs she needs to lighten up, though. Uh, you think? Mm -hmm. We might have found in her bag some, uh, like, antipsychotic <laughs> medicine. Some prescription that Scott's oh, going to look up on the Internet. Man. She is a little high-strung. She's very serious about underdogs. Underdog. Hi, I'm Scott Hoffheis. I'd like to thank you for watching this episode of Atomic TV. You know, in the past, they used to think Christmas was all about strippers and Santa Claus. But Underdog Lady taught me the true meaning of Christmas. It's all about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's about recycling. So I'd like to end this episode by wishing each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And now, I'm off to the recycling bin. So, this is it. Good night, and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Michelle, Santa's littlest helper. And you have been watching Atomic TV's Christmas special. We'll be back next year, same time, same place. Butt shot, the food is butt shot. <laughs> Santa's pussy strolling down the lane Here comes Santa's pussy, that cat he sure is crazy man Here comes Santa's pussy, and he's taking a candy cane up the reindeer Oh yeah Hi, I'm Tom Warner, and you're watching the Atomic TV Xmas 98 special As part of my Christmas message to our dear viewers I'd just like to say I'd like to clear up some of the uh, dispute about my ambiguous sexuality. I know over the course of the year you've heard rumors that my predilection for tidiness, for listening almost exclusively to 60 girl groups, and my obsession with dating almost exclusively waifish, almost tomboyish young women with small breasts leads some to think that I am on the fence ready to pummel over to the other side. But I'd like to clear up those rumors. You say you need more proof? Well, this, dear viewers, is Atomic TV's official Peter Meter test girl, Michelle. And those, dear viewers, are breasts. Big ones, bouncy ones, beefy ones. In a word, my kind of breasts. Would a gay man allow himself to be pummeled roughly around the head and shoulders by these bazoombas? Oh! Whoa! 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 There, Tiny Tom. That was your baptism by bosom. I christen you a man. Wow. So listen, dear viewer, the Tom Warner may walk the line of poor taste. He walks it like a man. Thank you, and have a very, very little Christmas. I still say it's a bag. <laughs> okay, then you do the full bag. I was reacting there, right? Ugh, is that thing off yet? God, I hate living this sham. <sighs>
no, no, no! The dances. I'd like to show you. I, I want to learn some disco. So disco? Yes, yeah, so disco. Why do you have to do that? Uh, <laughs> I need some remedial disco. Like this? Oh yeah, like that, like that. Oh yeah. version of Silent Night. I wonder if Underdog Lady can sing soprano to this. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Silent Night? Is there Silent Night over here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, can you straddle Santa now and do the lap dance? Traditional cowboy. Yeah. I know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get. Or all the way across. All the way across. We're gonna get Silent Night. Why are we having Silent Night? Because under that's Underdog Lady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is um, <laughs> Silent Night Disco Mix. This film, Tom. Lap dancing. <laughs> I'd take it with anything. Hey, you find your silent night because it's like. We can dub it in. We'll get the CD and we'll dub it. Yeah, but then you can't do any voiceover. You can't do any. Or you, you can. All, all this, if you kill the music now, we can add it later. Oh, that's good. We're just doing a dance to that. Any music, don't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just about done dancing. You know, have you gotten enough of this? Just gotta keep stopping it. Let's go. Huh? Let's go with a straight dance. With what? Let's just go with the dance. Whatever you want here.
it's very hot. Can we get Ron on camera? With Michelle? Kill the music, and we'll just do your uh, promo thing. Hi, my name is Ron Klaus, and we're here at Object at 1018 North Charles Street in the rear of Atomic Books. And tonight's outfits were um, provided by Object, uh, such as lovely Michelle's. And we didn't do Tom's. Tom Warner provided his own outfit this evening. We have lovely shackles, chains, bras, panties, latex goodies, harnesses, <clears throat> just about anything you can think of. How about, how about, let's see those whips. Okay, let me get out of the way. No, you're gonna be, you gotta uh, get Tom in there for the paddle. Here. Here, yes, Tom, come here. Okay, then we do. Uh, Sorry, Ron, I'll say. See, I don't, I don't have to have this in tripod, do I? Yeah, I'll leave it on tripod. Oh, oh, oh. Good second. Woo! Nice. Pick it up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, Ron, tell me, you have some whips to paddle Tiny Tom's butt because he's been a bad, bad boy. Very Underdog nice. lady said he was very, very naughty. Very naughty. Come on over here, Tiny Tom. Very Tom. naughty. You've been a bad boy, and Ron's going to teach you a lesson. Well. TV Xmas 98, the year Underdog Save Christmas special. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Now where's Scott up like that? Woo! I think he's recycling. Ho, ho, ho! He's gonna miss all the fun! Get the vodka! Woohoo! Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Man, I think those have slips! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> yeah! <laughs>
Is it in there? No. What, the dildo? Yeah. Hey, Ron. Ron. <laughs> Ron, I'm cowboy. I christened thee. A man. Cowboy. Half a man. Oh, yeah. Turn that thing on. Like underdog Batman. Suzanne Muldowney, Atomic yeah. TV is now right. signing off. Um, I can't wait. Look, look, here's a, here's a better way. Why are you watching that stand on our Christmas special that Mary is here. Wow. Whip child. Hi, we're from the Spring Grove State Mental Institution. Is there an underdog lady here? Wait a second, that's not a very good end to our episode. You haven't seen the end until you see Michelle's end. Whoa, ho, ho! Daughter, on Blitzen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Michelle! Get it, in this, get it this way. Which way? Yeah, butt in the camera. Whoa, ho, ho! This is the star there. Whoa, ho, ho! <laughs> She's been a naughty girl! Ho ho ho! You're not touching me that one! <laughs> well, you can spend tiny time with that one. Okay, we'll use okay. Tom on that one. Turn right, around. Where's Tom? I want to get Tom in. Ho ho ho! Michelle's my favorite reindeer! Ho oh, ho ho! Take me to the North Pole, baby! Ho oh, ho 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 ho! On daughter, on Blitzen! Okay, I'm starting to hurt on this we side. Need we need a black close up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. That's you enough of that. Santa's ready for his lap dance now. <laughs> Santa's losing his wedding. Yeah. Oh my god, we gotta, we gotta do this. One on him. For the lap dance. The what? One on each thing for the lap dance. The oh, what? Oh, oh, what the hell is this? That's rubber. <laughs> Aren't we forgetting the true meaning of this day? All kidding aside, you're right, of course, little Bart. And who better to tell us the true meaning of Christmas than Pa Cartwright, Christmas. Lauren Green? Christmas. How do you define it? It's so many things to so many people. But I think there are some things that Christmas is to all of us. Christmas is a feeling of peace, a glow of goodwill. Christmas is a fireplace, crackling and warm. Mmm, that feels good. Gets the chill out of your bones. Christmas is a window that makes you feel snug and secure inside and lets you look outside at the snow-topped trees and the bright, clear sky. Christmas is a closet full of toys. At least this is where we hide ours. And it works, too. Been fooling the kids for years. <laughs> we let a little fella see what's in this package. I think he has seen what's in this package. And Christmas is friends dropping over. The sound of laughter and music and good talk. Mm -hmm. Needs just a little dash of nutmeg. And Christmas is kids sleeping upstairs. <laughs> At least I think they're sleeping. 
And Christmas is that last minute rush to rearrange the furniture to make room for the tree. The Christmas tree, big and beautiful and merry and bright and just bursting with gifts. Hmm, I wonder what I got. What well groomed gentleman doesn't need 19 pairs of slippers? Oh, and I almost forgot. Most of all, Christmas is children. Wonderful youngsters are the UNICEF Children's Choir. I'm Lorne Green. Thank you, thank you. Now you know the rest of the story. The peddling of obscene books, a furtive and despicable occupation, has become a lucrative sideline for unscrupulous shopkeepers in some high school neighborhoods. For war-stimulated adolescents are impressionable customers for this kind of cheap pornography. A major factor that makes youngsters prime targets for this printed filth is the natural curiosity of youth about the mysterious force of sex. These highly colorful magazines picture stark nudity on slick paper. They often present their subject on bed or couch, obviously calculated to stimulate the reader. For the sake of decency in this film, we have partially covered the pictures and disguised the identity of the models. But actually, these magazines not only display complete nudity, but they do so in a perverted manner. We know that once a person is perverted, it is practically impossible for that person to adjust to normal attitudes in regard to sex. The insatiable curiosity of youth will cause him to delve deeper and deeper until his utter depravity is complete. <laughs> 